Hey guys, this is Jim with Chicagoland Geeks. Today I'm going to be showing you how to change the thermal paste on a video card. The example card we're using today is going to be an MSI GTX 670. It's the OC Power Edition. I recently had the card replaced due to it blowing up while playing Final Fantasy MMO, so um, I decided to make a video of showing how to change it the right way. Um, it's a fairly small modification but it can make a drastic difference in temperatures. You know, for spending a few bucks, it's really the best thing you can do for a video card if you don't feel like going the route of water cooling. So, while we're waiting for me to take this apart, why don't I get some before and after temperatures for you. All right, so here are our pre-change results for Fermark, which is a GPU stress test. Uh, basically, the card maxed out at 73 degrees, but that is only due to it being throttled after 70. On the GTX 600 series cards, after you reach 70 degrees Celsius, they throttle themselves, meaning lower power, lower GPU usage, and attempt to kind of balance out the temperatures. Um, you can see that represented on the right-hand side with the squiggly lines on the graph. That is the card being throttled. So this is the stock pace. This is running 100% for 15 minutes and very quickly, you know, it reached a point of throttle. So let's see what changing the pace will do for our results and we'll get back to that later. All right, so the replacement paste we're gonna be using for this project is made by Zygmatek, spelled X-I-G-M-A-T-E-K. It is the PTI G4512. Um, it's great thermal paste. I've been using it for a lot of things, CPUs, GPUs, whatever. Um, it's great because I mean thermal conductivity is there. It's awesome. There's no cure time, which is a huge bonus. It's non-conductive, so you don't have to worry about getting it on things and frying other parts. And basically, you know, for the money, I don't think you can buy a better paste at this point. It's what I use primarily and what I'll continue to use. So, that being said, once again, I'm finished taking it apart. So, let's see what kind of results we got after we used the paste. So here are the results after we change the paste, and as you can see by the graph on the right, that is what you're looking for. You can see that the power limit is a straight line, 100%. Um, that means there was no throttling involved, so that's exactly what we're looking for. The card maxed out at 65 degrees Celsius. Now that's 5 degrees under throttle point, and that's running the card at 100% GPU usage for 15 minutes. So. As you can see, the pace made a drastic difference. This is a healthy um, healthy temperature line right there, so that's what you're looking for, and this is why we did it. So now that we have our results, why don't we go ahead and show you the process of actually changing out the paste. I'll give you an example of how to lay it, how to clean it, everything. So let's get that started. All right, well, here's the card. Here's all the tools we'll be using. I have the two-step Arctic Silver Cleaner paste, some Q-tips, alcohol swabs, the usual. Um, here's a card. You know, as you can see, it's a pretty card. Nothing too fancy, but it's a beast. So the first thing you're going to want to do with uh, swapping out the thermal paste is look at the back of the card. You're going to see the four screws that are mounted to the the heat sink on the other side of the card. Those are the very first things that will need to come off. But before you do that, you're probably going to have to unplug some kind of fan power cable. It's usually located on the side. Here's ours right here. It's just a four pin cable that comes out pretty easily, just like that. And uh, now that that's out, you need to go ahead and take out the screws. Now for this you're going to need to use a small Phillips screwdriver. Um, we're not talking super small like eyeglasses, but pretty small. Um, you're going to want to follow a, I call it the cross diagonal pattern. You don't want to completely unscrew everything right away. You want to start in one corner, move to the next, unscrew it most of the way, and then just kind of rotate around and go in the circle like you were changing a tire. Um, it's pretty easy, nothing too fancy. Uh, the part you're going to have to be careful for though is when you actually undo all these screws and pull it apart. You just want to be gentle, you know, just in, I mean it's a $400 video card, you just want to be careful, you know. So take your time, undo the screws and slowly pull the two apart. Um, sometimes it helps if you heat up the video card ahead of time just to kind of get the thermal paste loose and, you know, ready to be pulled apart.
right, so slowly pull that sucker apart, and there she is. There's our GPU. That little square on the left-hand side, that's where all your money's going. That is the powerhouse central CPU of the graphics card. Well, it's not a CPU, it's a GPU, but we're not going to get too technical here. Um, the very first thing you're going to want to do is to clean off the existing paste. Now for that, I use the Arctic Silver's two-step program. It basically is the first step. It, you know, kind of loosens up and dissolves the existing paste, breaks it up real nice. Um, so with that, you're just going to want to take that and put a, f a few drops on each portion, one on the GPU, one on the block on the right-hand side. Just kind of let that sit there for a second. You'll see it slowly just start to drift apart. It, I mean, this stuff literally just, you know, disintegrates the existing uh, paste. So we'll let that sit just for a second. And while we do that, we are going to take some Q-tips and just kind of slowly swish it around, brush it around so, um, so the paste, you know, so you can evenly spread the Arctic Silver compound around or alcohol, whatever you want to use. It doesn't have to be the two-step stuff, but I mean, I find that the stuff works great. I've been using it a long time. Just kind of swish it around until you can grab what you can, do it on both sides. Then you're probably going to have to come back and do it again. You know, it's, it takes a couple times to get it completely off, but you want to make sure you do a really good job because, you know, any imperfections in the new paste layout, it will reduce performance. If you get a piece of dust, piece of air, whatever, they all cause problems. They all increase heat. So take your time. Make sure you get this completely off. Um, in the process, I'm going to speed up the video a little bit so we don't have to watch me sitting there and brushing this crap off. All right, now that we have the majority of the thermal paste off, as you can see, there's a little bit around the GPU die still. You're gonna to wanna to come back with the second step of the Arctic Silver program. And this is more of just, it's basically alcohol. And this just goes through and it helps clear out imperfections left by the previous step. The first step's kind of a citrusy, orangey, almost like Goo Gone type product. So by doing this, you know, it just helps remove excess. Um, excess thermal paste as well as you know kind of prep the surface for receiving the new uh, the new paste you know this part you have to be very careful with you're gonna have to really take your time make sure everything's completely off you're gonna want to use the lint free cloth uh, microfiber or coffee filters coffee filters actually work pretty good for this part um, so with this part really take your time until you can see the mirror like finish on the GPU die and just like I said just really make sure there's no dust no debris and just clean the hell out of it. All right, there she is, all cleaned up. You can see that mirror-like finish on the die on the left-hand side, see my reflection in it, which means you're doing it the right way. Once again, like I said, make sure there's no dust or debris. As you can see, there's no lint. So everything's looking ready to receive thermal paste. So let's get ready to do that. All right, so here's our thermal paste, the Zygmatech PTI G4512. Fantastic stuff. It comes with a little spatula, you know, just to kind of spread it out as they suggest, but honestly, I don't feel like that's the right way to put on thermal paste. Spreading always causes issues. The only thing I like to do after I dab some paste onto the die, I kind of just mix it around on top, you know, make sure there's no air in it, and just kind of, you know, give it a good setting. Um, you don't want too much of a cone shape, but you, I don't think you want to spread it, though. I mean, it's, it's never worked out for me. I've always had best results with just a... A nice fat wallop right on the middle of the die. And like I said, just kind of knock it down a little bit with the spatula. Now putting on the thermal paste on a GPU compared to a CPU is a little different. With the CPU, you tend to just use a little bit of paste. You want a very thin layer. 
Same is true with the GPU, but with a few exceptions. You kind of want the paste to go over the edges of the die and collapse into that area of silicone around that green portion. Um, that's how they lay the paste out. That's how everybody says you should do it. That's how I've done it, and it's always had great results. So you really want to make sure there's a good glob on there. But like I said, don't go crazy with it. You don't want it to come out of the edges of the silver portion of the uh, GPU die. So just put a fat wallop on there, and that's all you need. All right, now this could be the somewhat tricky part. You really have to take your time and make sure everything's lined up, you know, lined up pretty good. You're going to want to compress these two pieces together evenly as possible when you come together with them. As you can see here, you're going to have to line up the screw holes with the four screw mounts on the, on the CPU block, or GPU block, sorry. And really just take your time, make sure everything's lined up, and then once you're comfortable, slowly press together. You're going to have to wiggle it around a little bit. That's going to help spread out the paste. Make sure your fan holes are lined up. But the way to know if you did it the right way is do not pull the GPU apart to see how the paste is laying. You know, you're just you're breaking what the whole point of this was. A way to test though is kind of just put a little pressure on it to pull it apart and if it resists and has suction, well guess what? You did it the right way. So, that's pretty much it. At this point, we just need to put the screws back in, hook up the power cord, and we'll be on our way to overclocking glory. All right, now when putting the GPU back together, you're gonna wanna follow the same pattern you had when taking it apart. Putting the screws in about halfway, starting in one corner, going across, then going around in a circle. Um, once they're all in, you wanna go ahead and fully tighten them in the same pattern you put them in, and that's really it. Plug in your power cord, Make sure everything's good, make sure the screws are all good, and that's it. Yeah, you can wipe it off for good measure if you want. That's just me though, because you know I take pride in these things. There she is. All right, so that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, there'll be lots more to come as we go along, as we're, you know, we're really gonna start showing everything we do here at Chicago Land Geek. So stay tuned, I'll be posting more videos. I have more video cards, more computers to do this with. So thanks for watching and talk to you later. Peace.